Raus! Get out of the room! What are some differences in piano education between Asia, Europe, and America? These are my experiences in a nutshell. Hi, I'm Dr. Yukin Jo Brandenburg. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. I've often been asked about the differences between studying piano in Asia, Europe, and America. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experience studying piano on three continents. Before we go any further, I want to be clear that these observations are based on my own experience. Other people may have had different experiences. Okay, let's get started. I was born in Taiwan. I started playing piano when I was very young. I had several piano teachers in Taiwan. I even had one American teacher for a couple of years. But most of my early music training was by Taiwanese teachers. Asian teachers typically are very strict with an emphasis on discipline. When they give you homework, you do it. There are no excuses. Students practice piano every day, even on holidays, especially on holidays, because there's no school. Parents will team up with the teacher to come up with the craziest plan for how many competitions you should do over the next three months and then over the next year. We were tested on scales every semester all the way through school. They even train you to have perfect pitch or the ability to identify a tone just by hearing it. Piano teachers give you finger exercises, etudes, and many different pieces. Numbers are very important there. The numbers of pieces that you learn, the number of competitions you enter, or even the number of beats per minute on the metronome showing how fast you can play. Numbers really matter to a lot of them. They often give you pieces that are much more difficult than you can play. But because you are told to practice more and more, eventually you are able to play those very difficult pieces. However, most students are only able to play very mechanically because young students aren't taught to understand those difficult pieces mentally and emotionally. Teachers usually don't compliment students because Asian culture teaches that if you don't compliment children too much, they won't get cocky and they will keep practicing. Discipline is an important component of musical training, so Asian children are fortunate to grow up in cultures that value obedience. Hey, if you like this kind of video, give me a thumbs up so I know. Soon after I finished elementary school, my parents sent me to Vienna, Austria to study piano. Of course, the first thing that was different was the language. In Austria, they speak German. I had learned a little bit of German before I got there, but in language classes, they don't teach you specialty words. So having piano lessons in old German was very hard. I remember my very first piano lesson after I got to Vienna. My professor said the word fingersatz. It means fingering. I knew what fingering was, but I didn't know what that word was. So I asked, was ist fingersatz? And the professor said, raus, get out of the room. German piano teachers are generally brutally honest and direct. They do not hesitate to speak the truth to your face. If you are not very talented and struggling with the piano, they will tell you that you will not make it as pianist and you should quit. 
They don't care if they lose students. In Europe, they take the composer's work very seriously. They only want to see what the composers wrote, and not what publishers or editors might have added to the score, because they consider that not original anymore. So for the classical period, composers like Haydn, Mozart, and Beethoven, we were only allowed to use word text books. Word text are scores meant to convey the intention of the composer as exactly as possible, and are often based on the composer's original manuscript or the first published editions. In the case of Chopin, for example, we were only allowed to use the Polish Paderewski edition. Piano students who are serious about piano practice many hours every day. It's not unusual for pre-college students to practice two to three hours, and college students to practice six to eight hours every day. I practice eight hours regularly, and before competitions, I even practiced ten hours a day. By the end of the day, I felt like my arms were falling off. The main reason European college students can practice so much is because the music conservatories are not as academic as, say, American schools. In Austria, you can take the exams or finish your coursework on your own time, so people can spend more time practicing rather than going to classrooms, writing countless papers, and preparing for weekly quizzes. Or exams. If you studied in Europe or Asia, share your experience in the comments. That leads me to the next place, America. I studied in America at the College Conservatory of Music at the University of Cincinnati in Ohio. The music training in America, generally speaking. Is very well rounded. Not only do you need to work on your major instruments, you also have to do lots of other classes. Attendance and class grades will affect your GPA, which affects your scholarship. So students usually work very hard to maintain good grades. And what suffers? Well, the practice time, of course. But that is just a brief picture of college life. What happens with the general piano learning in America? Generally speaking, piano teachers in America are very encouraging. They like to say "good job" a lot. Sometimes they may say that children are talented, even when they are not. By not being direct. As a German teacher might, a teacher might lead a student to a much greater disappointment later. In America, many piano teachers are open to all types of music: classical, pop, jazz, spiritual music, and movie soundtracks. They are often open to all kinds of edits and arrangements of scores. American kids seem to be very interested in after-school sports and other activities, and they have very busy schedules, so they spend much less time on practice. For the most part, teachers understand and accommodate this reality. So, let me tell you what I think about all of this. In my opinion, there are some good and some not so good things about piano studies in each of the three cultures I've mentioned today. I feel so fortunate to have benefited from all three, and if I had to do it all over, I would do it in the same order again. In Asia. 
The culture of discipline is very good for development as a musician. However, the very fast pace of learning might result in advanced technicality and a lack of musicality. I call this an inch deep and a mile wide. In Europe, students spend a lot of time practicing, so they can go very deep with learning a piece or a style. In places like Vienna, which was for so long the cultural center of classical music, this depth and the focus on tradition can result in what I call an inch wide and a mile deep. Also, I'm sure the directness of some teachers in this traditional center has destroyed more than one late bloomer. In America, the encouragement considered so important in child mental and emotional development may sometimes hinder technical development. I think students of every age need to know what is good or bad. Good sound, bad sound, enough practiced, not enough practiced, things like that. On the other hand, America casts a wide net of genres and musical styles, which encourages participation in piano studies. And at the end of the day, piano playing itself may not be the most important point. Studies show that playing a musical instrument increases memory skills, teaches perseverance, and creates a sense of achievement, improves coordination, improves both math and reading skills, and helps people learn to express themselves. Just think about all the ways that music and other arts can help with human development. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it with your friends. I hope to see you in my next one. Bye.